Hey guys, cheers. This is Wander here and welcome to my channel, The Americanka. <laughs> here I make videos about my love and obsession with traveling in and living in the Balkan region and I'm specifically based in Belgrade, Serbia. And welcome to the first of a series of videos I'm going to make about things you shouldn't do as a traveler and mistakes to avoid in Balkan countries. I am starting off with Serbia where I have been based for three years now. Now, before we get into the video, I'm so excited to thank today's sponsor of this video, Surfshark VPN. VPN stands for Virtual Private Network. And so Surfshark encrypts your data online when you're using the internet so that you stay private and protected from trackers, malware, and phishing attempts. You can also use Surfshark VPN to access websites that have your favorite TV shows or movies, but are blocking your region from accessing the website. I do this to watch one of my favorite British reality TV shows, which is called Made in Chelsea. When I go to the website and I click play, it says not available and that it's only available in the UK. So then I just go to Surfshark VPN and I connect to a UK location IP and now I can watch it. Yay! Surfshark even offers a 30 day money back guarantee. So I've linked to Surfshark in the description below and you can also use my code Balkans for 83% discount plus three months free. So be sure to check that out. Alrighty then, let's get started. Don't number one, don't let all of the contradictory information about tipping confuse you and just tip no matter what, always tip. Tip, 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 tip. <laughs> I was so confused by this uh, when I first moved here because I would hang out with people who never tipped. And then uh, other people would be like, no, you have to tip. Sometimes I would like tip a taxi driver and they would give me my money back and they'd be like, no, 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 it's fine. And I was like, what the hell? What's going on? So anyway, now that I've been here for three years, I've come to the conclusion that you should just always, always tip and always tip at least 10%. I tip the delivery person, I tip the taxi driver, I tip the bartender, and don't let all the misinformation confuse you about it, okay? The next don't, don't forget about the white card, or as they say here, belly carton. It's the proof of where you're staying which you have to get within 48 hours of arriving in Serbia. Now, the borders rarely, rarely ask for it. Only once did a border that I was crossing um, ever ask for it. So if you forget to get it, it's not the end of the world, but it might come in handy and you just never know and it's better to be on the safe side. So if you're staying at a hotel or hostel, they just register you because they have an agreement with the police station. You don't have to go there or anything. So just keep that in mind. The next don't, don't try to enter Serbia from Kosovo if you entered Kosovo first. <laughs> Serbia doesn't recognize Kosovo as an independent state. So let's say you travel to Macedonia or Montenegro or Albania, then you enter Kosovo and then try to enter Serbia, you won't be let in because Serbia is not gonna recognize that the border and that stamp between Kosovo and Macedonia and Kosovo and Albania and whatever, Montenegro, as a legitimate uh, border or a legitimate stamp. For example, with me, when I first traveled to the Balkans, I was in Macedonia and then I went to Kosovo and then I wanted to go into Serbia. But Kosovo is still part of Serbia in the eyes of Serbia. So I couldn't then go to Serbia. So I had to go back to Macedonia, then go to the Macedonian and Serbian border to get in to Serbia. So keep that in mind. Speaking of traveling in Serbia, the next don't is to, is to don't. Don't, <laughs> I'm making myself laugh. <laughs> don't stick to just Belgrade. And I know you can't visit every single place. And I always find it annoying when people are like, you should have gone here and you should have gone there. And why didn't you travel here? And why didn't you travel there? It's like, well, are you gonna pay for my plane ticket and my transportation? But what I will say is I do think a lot of people come to Serbia to just know about Belgrade and there's just so many beautiful parts of Serbia. My favorite part of Serbia that I do not for the life of me understand why Serbian tourism does not market this part of Serbia more is Eastern Serbia. I still have to upload a video about my travels there. It's just the most amazing road trip Eastern Serbia. There's so many fortresses. You reach the widest part of the Danube River. There's just so many like historical sites. It's just so freaking epic. And by the way, like a lot of these places, they're just an hour, a couple of hours away from Belgrade. And so yeah, Serbia is an amazing 
place for road trips. I highly recommend renting a car. You can check out a website like Discover Cars and it will show you the rates of different companies and you can book online. You can even book a car to be picked up in one country and drop it off in another country if you plan to do like a multiple uh, Balkan country road trip or something. So, but yeah, Serbia is just an amazing, amazing country to do road trips through. The next, don't, don't take it personally when the customer service people aren't over the top friendly to you. Um, I found in most Eastern European countries, maybe just a European thing in general, <laughs> a lot of people aren't smiling and they're not like, hey, how are you? How can I help you today? They're not like that here. And I think it can be a bit shocking if you come from countries like Canada or the USA. Don't take it personally. I think customer service here is just different than it is in some of those Western countries. Here it's just like more realistic. It's just someone's job. They probably don't love their job, so. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Next, don't just jump in the waiting taxis outside of a popular tourist area or like a popular street. If you watch my video about the biggest scams in the Balkans, you will already know what I'm talking about. This isn't a big deal, but yeah, just use the app Cargo, which is like Serbia's version of Uber or call a taxi ahead of time. Because a lot of times if you just jump in one of the taxis that's waiting outside, you might get into the taxi of like a privately owned uh, taxi company who set their meters um, to go really, really fast. So you're paying a higher rate. The next don't is don't drink rakia incorrectly. You know, there's actually no right or wrong way to drink rakia. I'm just like being silly. But I have been confused about something for many, many years living here that I finally had someone like really explain it to me well. And that is like, when do you uh, drink rakia slowly? And when do you like drink it as a shot? So my bartender friend basically explained to me that when you're like celebrating something with maybe a group of friends and you order around a rakia, that's when you like down it as a shot. Like you do a cheers and you're like, jivili, you down it as a shot. Um, but when you just, you know, maybe by yourself or with one other friend, you know, you can just order a rakia, order a side of water if you want. Just drink it slowly and enjoy the drink. So that's what I learned. I have a feeling that there's gonna be people in the comments saying contradictory things, so that's fine. You can go ahead and comment that in the description. Ain't gonna hate you for it, it's fine. The next don't. Don't go to Croatia from Serbia without changing, without um, exchanging, sorry, your Serbian dinars to Croatian kuna before entering Croatia. I hope that makes sense. You cannot exchange Serbian dinars into Croatian kuna in Croatia. You have to do it first in Serbia. So yeah, this can be a huge problem because you can go to Croatia and all you have is cash <laughs> and then you can't exchange it anywhere. This happened to me when I went to Split once. So it's super important that you exchange the money in Serbia before you go to Croatia. <laughs> the next don't. Don't be mad or, or have your feelings hurt when the person at the grocery store does not bag your groceries. In the United States at stores, someone bags the groceries for you. Like everywhere you go, that's just part of their job. And how like customer service is all about serving the customer, even if they're an asshole. But here, um, it is confusing because some places the person won't bag the groceries for you and then other places they will. I don't know why some do and some don't, but I've learned it's okay. I feel like a lot of things here, there's no consensus for how to do it, including walking on the right side of the street. There's still no consensus about that, it always annoys me. But anyway, we're not gonna get into that. And the last don't is don't assume that just because there isn't a parking meter, that the parking is free. If you are driving in Serbia, maybe you've rented a car. Yeah, a lot of places don't have parking meters. What they do have are zones. And usually where you park, there's a sign um, telling you what zone you're in, and then you have to pay the parking uh, by texting the number on the sign. I've linked to an article that describes this in more detail and everything you need to know about parking, specifically in Belgrade. So be sure to check that out. So guys, that is the end of this video. I'm sure there's gonna be some Serbs watching this video who have some don'ts that they think I missed in this video. So feel free to comment those to help out any travelers planning a trip to Serbia who may be watching this video. Now, with that being said, cheers, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.